We're here to talk through Craig Casper's interesting Let's Puzzle from this week. We haven't done a Let's Talk through yet, so it seemed a good opportunity to highlight both uh, standard deductions for this style and also some very unusual kinds of deductions, but things that may open your eyes to uh, other ways you should visualize these puzzles, particularly when they get somewhat hard. I'd say the first detrimental here is pretty trivial. Uh, if you know about uh, avoiding the two by two rule, uh, some other cells you can mark off as X's are, are pretty trivial. One thing you should uh, start to do if you aren't already doing it is to think about how cells that are near shaded groups really don't have a lot of options left to them. And you can take a situation like this. If this cell is shaded, it's going to be required to take this cell, so that's no good. So these are X's. Even if this cell is shaded, it's going to be required to come over here and form a two by two group, so it's also no good. And so you know, around one region where we shade four cells quickly, we can also mark off 11 cells as unused quickly, and it's useful to be able to keep track of all of that. Now, the most interesting insight in this puzzle, I don't normally mark things this way, but I will for this walkthrough, uh, I'll sort of store in my mind that the tetromino in this region, whichever of the five cells it uses, so it's going to take this or this to complete itself, is going to be an L tetromino. And one consequence of this uh, knowing this can't be used to form a 2x2 two two rule, as it also turns out a cell like this can't be used because it would also form an L shape and it would touch an L shape that we know will be an L shape. We haven't drawn it all in yet, but knowing that this is an L group, we can mark off that cell and you can even mark some others in this uh, group around it. For instance, this can't be used because it would be an L shape and it would touch that L shape. Uh, we get to this state, which is. Uh, one of the sort of interesting points or opportunities for uh, uncommon thinking. And it has to do with recognizing when there's only one escape path left for a region. And it happens twice in this puzzle. We'll start in the upper left where it's maybe clearest at this moment. Uh, this region has marked off, it had originally two regions it could escape to. It could come out to this region to its right. It could go to this region that surrounds it on its top left and bottom. But now it must come through this E-shaped region. It's the only one left that has cells that border it. And what that means is that because this is an L tetromino in it, the region outside it cannot have an L tetromino. So any cell that would necessarily form an L tetromino shape, these two are certainly those, this is, this is, can be excluded. And because some of these cells are shaded, for instance, now these can't be used because this would form a two by two group. So we can shade these and these. And uh, even this one would form a two by two group. It turns out that because of the puzzle needing connectivity and with this region not having an L shape that it's immediately clear. I'll say, you know, <laughs> when you're solving, it'll take some time to do, but it actually is the case that there's just one option for the upper left corner, which is for an L to connect to an I it, exactly in this manner. That's the only way for this to, to connect out to the rest of the puzzle. And the second major breakthrough is going to be of the same style. It's maybe even harder to see, but it has to do with this lower left corner where we have one region that because of now X's we placed in the puzzle has only one escape, which is to the region that's surrounding it on its top side. And then this also still has to connect back to the puzzle. And right now it has three groups to do it, but we'll see pretty quickly that it can't use many of them. So let's actually start up in this, uh, this side. The top cell can't be shaded because it would form an I touching an I. And so the only route for this to connect through is to make an L shape. And the thing is, it also is the region that must be touching the tetromino down below. So if this is an L, I'll sketch this in. It, this cell must be shaded because this region has to touch the one around it. You get two L's and that's no good. And that necessary deduction says that whatever cells are used in this region, uh, they're not going to be connecting to the I as their root in, so they have to connect to one of these two regions. And here we should be a little more careful in marking off cells that are going to be part of it. But now we have uh, two situations. This one as an escape route, we know it's going to come through this cell. Uh, it, it's, it seems somewhat flexible. This one is maybe a lot less flexible. It's going to be an L tetromino uh, because there are five cells it could use and it's either this L or that L. And it's got to connect through to uh, both regions from it. And 
if these three cells are shaded, there's no room to the left to get anything going on, so it would have to connect through those four at the bottom. But one thing you might have noticed earlier is actually we could have marked this cell as unusable pretty quickly because if it's an I, the cell beneath it that connects through it is also an I. And so it turns out there's never a situation you can use this cell, and that means actually if this is an L, there's never a situation that a tromino can fit in the region at all. That you'll always violate a two by two shading rule. And so there's a grand sweeping gesture, which is to mark off all of those cells as well. And now we have really cracked uh, the puzzle that uh, there's one connection back into the grid, which is through that cell. That leaves one option for the region below it, and similarly one option for the lower leftmost region. So these are uh, quickly filled. Uh, these five cells aren't really free anymore uh, in the way we've marked them off, so it's required to be a T. That means this group down here can't be a T. If it used that cell, it would be, so it's required to come to the left. The first region we shaded now has just one way back to the rest of the shaded cells, which is required to be that I. It's going to use these two cells, and this will be the last sticking point maybe for a little bit of time in the puzzle, which is does this group connect through this cell or through uh, what would be an L tetromino here? And what you should be able to see is if this is shaded, then neither this cell nor that cell can be shaded. You can only shade three at most. And so that cell can't be used. It's got to connect through uh, the bottom option forming an S. We get another S here. And we've managed to solve this puzzle, which, as I say, is a, a pretty fun uh, example from our guest contributor, Craig. Uh, the ways that uh, a region with one option coming out of it manifests the, sort of twice in these corners. If there is a theme to the puzzle, that may be, may be it. That this is a, a less common thing you may be looking at in Let's Puzzles, but if you start to see it, it will help you realize the connectivity constraints which in a global picture will get you through the hardest Let's Puzzles. Thanks.